This lecture is part of a Udemy course entitled Design of Wastewater Treatment Plants for On-Site Projects. You will learn how to fully design a treatment plant for small to medium scale projects. You can find an 80% discount promo link in the description box. Hello everyone and welcome to this new wastewater treatment lecture. In this lecture we will cover the membrane bioreactors or what is commonly known as the MBR. In this lecture, we will first start by the history of the MBR. We will see why this process was created. Then we will go through the process overview, the MBR scheme, the stages of an MBR, the applications, the MBR membrane, the removal efficiency, the advantages and disadvantages, and finally, the material of an MBR wastewater treatment plant. A quick overview of the history. So the MBR was created by a group of researchers in 1969 in the USA. The main purpose was actually to produce a high quality effluent using an ultrafiltration membrane. So we wanted to replace the activated sludge process, the traditional uh, ASP, by a filtration process that involved ultrafiltration. And this group was actually uh, able to reach a very high quality effluent, but they faced two major problems that are the high energy consumption, so the cost, and the membrane fouling. So they were facing the problem of uh, membrane clogging. In Japan, they were very interested in uh, this innovation and they did more research to try to solve the problems of the MBR in the 70s and 80s. And this process was actually ready to be used in the market in the 2000s. So membrane bioreactors, they have emerged as a substitute or a, uh, an improvement of the activated sludge process, which is considered as the main process of a uh, wastewater treatment plant. It is also considered as one of the most important innovations in wastewater. We have microfiltration and ultrafiltration membrane technology. These have very tiny uh, pore sizes that range from 0 0.05 to 0 0.4 micrometers. MBRs are widely used for municipal, so practically for uh, domestic uh, wastewater treatment and also for industrial effluents. They require less area compared to the uh, activated sludge process and also we can reach excellent effluent quality. So we have very high reduction of pollutants and organic matters. The membrane fouling remains a significant drawback of the MPR and also we have very high capex. So the capital cost uh, is very high and also the operation costs, the OPEX uh, is very high. We have high energy demand, maintenance costs, and also it is labor intensive. It requires very skilled uh, personnel within the uh, wastewater treatment plant. In the membrane filtration, we have the microfiltration and the ultrafiltration. So uh, these two are actually involved in the uh, MBR uh, sheets or the MBR membranes. And using these uh, two filtration techniques, we can actually highly reduce the colloidal particles, the sediments, the algae, the protozoa, the bacteria. So Actually, we can uh, disinfect our wastewater. We can remove very small colloids and viruses. This is impossible uh, using the uh, any other traditional uh, technique. These are usually removed in the tertiary treatment. So the MBR membrane can highly reduce the uh, colloidal particles as well as the pathogens, and we can reach a very high quality of effluent. Regarding the MBR scheme, we always start by pre-screening. The screening process is very crucial in a, an MBR waste, wastewater treatment plant. Actually, we use fine screening. We must highly reduce suspended solids, so highly reduce the TSS. Otherwise, we will face clogging 
problems in the uh, membrane separation. Then we have the anoxic treatment, so the denitrification without oxygen, so in anaerobic conditions. And then we have the aerobic treatment, so here we have um, actually diffusers, we have air that is being injected into the wastewater. And then we have the uh, MBR treatment, so the membrane separation. Here we are seeing uh, tubular uh, MBR. We will see later on that we have other types of um, uh, MBR filters. This can be the final stage before water uh, reuse or disposal, or we can use an optional uh, disinfection. This depends on your local uh, regulation and also if you want to reuse the water or just uh, dispose it. This is another scheme. We are seeing here a packaged MBR. This is actually a steel container. Notice an MBR can be pre-assembled and uh, it can be a portable wastewater treatment plant because it is uh, very compact. Also here, the water starts uh, by the screening stage. We have fine screening, then we have anaerobic treatment. So the anoxic stage, the anaerobic stage, then the aerobic. So notice the air bubble diffusers. Then we have the MBR models. Notice here that these models are submerged in the water. And also we have aerobic conditions. So we have air uh, injection. Also we have a, a chemical cleaning tank, notice. And these chemicals will be used to clean the MBR models. We will see later on how uh, uh, do we clean and how often do we clean these models. Let's go uh, deeper into this uh, MBR process. So as I have already said, we always start by the screening. So fine screening, then we can use the a primary clarifier. This is optional. As far as uh, your screening is well designed, it is uh, functioning very well, it is uh, well maintained, there is no need for pr primary clarifier. This really depends on the uh, amount of total suspended solids that is entering the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Then we have the MBR process. Notice that we have many stages. We have the anoxic stage that is anaerobic. Only we have to use uh, a, a mixer here. So we have a mixer. Then we have the aerobic stage and we have here the uh, injection of air. In the anoxic stage, we have what we call as the denitrification. Then we have the nitrification and the um, aerobic stage. In these stages, we have very high reduction of uh, nitrogen, also of phosphorus, of COD and BOD. Then the water will uh, go through the MBR tank. So the membrane filtration, the permeate or the clean water will go through disinfection if required, or it can be safely disposed or even used. And we have the formation of uh, here of a sludge, of an activated sludge. Some of it will be uh, disposed, so what we call as the wasted activated sludge, so it will undergo further treatment before being disposed, and the other part will be returned, so what is also known as the returned activated sludge. Now we will study each sta stage apart. So first we have the screening, as we have already said. The wastewater should undergo a high level of debris removal prior to the MBR. Otherwise, you will face fouling of the membrane, clogging. You will face some serious and costly problems. Use preferably fine screens with one to three millimeters openings. So as you can see here, we have a screen. Notice how tiny are the uh, openings, but this will actually require frequent cleaning. Okay, so frequent cleaning. Next, we have the denitrification in the anoxic tank. So we have here anoxic conditions that involve environments free of oxygen. We don't have air uh, diffusers. In the anoxic zones, we will be able to remove the nitrogen. So we will have the proliferation of uh, the anoxic bacteria and these bacteria will actually, uh, they will be hungry, let's say, they will starve and they will be uh, able to eat and break down nitro nitrogen products. So in this stage, we will have the conversion of nitrate and O3 into nitrogen gas. And notice the, that the 
An oxic tank is actually equipped with a mixer. Next, in the aerobic tank, we have the nitrification. And here we have to cre create aerobic conditions by diffusing air. So we have air diffusers here and we have air blowers. Notice that we have uh, many mechanical equipment in uh, an MBR wastewater treatment plant. And uh, during nitrification, the ammonium will be converted into nitrate. Now you might ask yourself that we, we uh, already removed the nitrate in this uh, stage and now we have the formation of nitrate. So this is why we have to uh, recirculate some of uh, uh, the water here and pump it back, back into the anoxic tank to remove the nitrate. Next we will have the membrane filtration. If we are using modules, so uh, a module is actually submerged into the uh, wastewater and we have air diffusion. So the membrane filtra filtration requires aerobic conditions. The water will actually enter through uh, these membranes. We will have a clean water, what we call as permeate. And we will have the formation of activated sludge. Notice we have the formation of uh, activated sludge. And this all is happening in aerobic condition through aeration that has uh, two, uh, two objectives to create aerobic conditions, but also to clean the, uh, these uh, uh, MBR sheets. So the membranes will act as solid liquid separation device, keeping the biomass within the bioreactor before discharging the treated effluent. MBR modules can be actually submerged or external. The submerged modules are placed within the wastewater notice. So this is the case uh, of a mo module that is being submerged. So just imagine that this module is placed within a tank and we have air uh, diffusing and the water is being cleaned uh, through uh, these modules. This is more common for municipal wastewater. So if you are dealing with domestic sewage, we have to use submerged MBRs. External MBRs are usually uh, tubular. So we have tubes that are filled with MBR uh, sheets or filters. These are outside uh, the aeration tank. And this is more common in industrial settings. We have many applications for the MPR. It can be used to treat domestic water and wastewater and also in uh, many un industries such as the food and beverage like the canned food, the pharmaceutical, the pulp and paper. So uh, any uh, wastewater uh, that come from these industries, the textile industry and also the leachate from landfills. Now we will go through the membranes in uh, MBRs. We have three types of membranes. We have the hollow fiber, and this is typically used for immersed MBRs. We have the flat sheet and the tubular. What we are seeing here is the hollow fiber. So it pretty much, uh, it looks like hairs. Let's have a closer look. Notice uh, the configuration of this hollow fiber. These are flat sheets. And whether the hollow fiber, whether it is a hollow fiber or flat sheet, they are placed in modules. Notice these are modules. Okay, so this is a module of hollow fiber. This is a module of a flat sheets. Notice uh, it pretty much look like A4 paper. Okay, so this is a closer look. And these are uh, placed in series uh, in modules. And this is the tubular shape. So we have tubes, it looks like the reverse osmosis vessel. So we have a vessel and inside these vessels, we have the MBR uh, membranes uh, in the form of tubes. MBRs are, are usually made from different polymers. So we have polymers, mainly these are polymers and from ceramic material. A very important process uh, in an MBR wastewater treatment plant is the cleaning. And this will help us avoid the fouling and clogging of these membranes. We need to perform three types of cleaning. First, the physical cleaning. During the physical cleaning, we have to conduct back flushing or back washing. So let's imagine, imagine that uh, this is an MBR membrane, let's say. So these are two membranes that are placed, the one beside the other, and the wastewater is uh, entering 
these uh, membranes and and the water is being filtered so we have the permeate okay so we have this clean water that is exiting during backwash what we will actually do is that we will reverse this flow so we will clean these membranes with clean water so we will be injecting some clean water within these membranes so this is why we call it as back flushing or back washing because we are reversing the flow and these membranes will be actually cleaned we do this every 12 minutes for uh, around 30 seconds so 0 0.5 minutes another process it, it is the relax period so during the rea the relaxation period let's say uh, the permeate withdrawal is stopped and we have uh, air injection so uh, air scouring to wash these sheets and this is done for one minute every 10 minutes okay so notice that uh, we have some uh, uh, strict requirements when cleaning the MBR membrane. Also, we have chemical cleaning by the injection of sodium hydroxide and sodium hypochlorite uh, in order to remove organic compounds. We do this once or uh, twice a week for 45 minutes. Also, we have the recovery cleaning and uh, this is an extensive chemical contact so actually we uh, submerge uh, these models with uh, chemicals that are chlorine or uh, citric acid for four to six hours and we do this uh, two to four times a year regarding the removal efficiency we have very high reduction of total suspended solids so, so if your influ influence is uh, uh, less than 200 ppm or milligrams per liter you can expect 98 percent removal of tss so an effluent of less than three milligrams per liter of tss this is a very clear effluent also high reduction of bod higher than 90 percent so if the influent has around 250 milligrams per liter of BOD, you can expect a BOD less than 25 milligrams per liter. Also high reduction of total nitrogen, 80 to 85 percent, and high reduction of total phosphorus, 75 to 80 percent. You can meet most of the uh, international and national standards easily. Now regarding the advantages, we have better effluent quality when you use the MBR. We have also less area required compared to the activated sludge process, less retention time. We can meet strict discharge limits for the BOD, the total suspended solids, the total nitrogen and the total phosphorus. We have also lower sludge production and also it can reduce and even eliminate disinfection. For the disadvantages, we have high capital and operation costs, as we have already said, high capex and high opex. It requires continuous monitoring and supervising. It requires high skilled uh, operators. We have also the risk of membrane fouling and clogging and the replacement of uh, the MBR membranes are actually pretty much expensive. We have high energy demand. We have already seen that it requires pumping. It requires aeration. And also this process is a, a complex process due to the membrane maintenance and cleanliness methods. For the MBR uh, material, we can make a metal a wastewater treatment plant uh, as you can see here it can be in concrete and it can be a package plant so a mobile wastewater treatment plant that can be pre-assembled and uh, then you simply uh, place it in the location where you are treating your wastewater